And here is a, a camera view. Uh, this is a, a long exposure. So what you do is you open up the camera, you point it towards the north, uh, and you leave the shutter open. And uh, leave it open for a bit of time. And as the Earth spins on its axis, the stars will appear to rotate around the pole star. So there you can pick out Polaris in the sky. You can see that it's not exactly above the North Pole. If I were to mark in the, the North Celestial Pole, it's pretty close to Polaris, but it's not exactly there. Uh, and the rest of the objects that are part of this celestial sphere uh, will appear to rotate uh, around the pole star. Now, if you look very, very carefully here, there are some objects which don't appear to be doing uh, the same thing uh, as the others. Like you can definitely identify some sort of object there, which definitely isn't part of the stars. And then there's another one there. And if you look very carefully, you might see another one there. They are probably aeroplanes. Could be, I guess, uh, satellites or something like that. But most likely airplanes because they all appear to be going in the direction here, which is probably where the airport is. So those objects are moving independently of the sky. Uh, they're not uh, behaving the same way as the stars. If you're really eagle-eyed, you may be able to pick out one more object. That's actually that object there. And that is most likely a shooting star. Now, what is a shooting star? It's simply a piece of dust that's burning up in the Earth's atmosphere, causing quite a bright uh, fireball there for that particular one. So the reason why Polaris doesn't appear to move is because it's directly above the north pole of the Earth. And in this simulation, you can see how that would mean that it doesn't change its position. So here on the next slide, uh, you can see how you can make a cool... Uh, star trail photographs by setting up a camera pointing it in the direction of north uh, and you can see the rotation of the stars around it uh, this one i think from texas i think it was texas it might have been arizona but i think it's pretty much texas so you can clearly see where north is and you can draw a line down and you know the direction of north that's a pretty cool way of looking at the different colors of the stars so stars which are close to Polaris will appear to go round it in circles. Those are called circumpolar stars. They never appear to set. Stars which are further away, well, they'll actually go down and go below the horizon and then come back up again at a later time. So using that, you can actually see the, the different trails that, are, that occur. Now on the next photograph, uh, you can see more star trails. Now I wonder where this photograph was actually taken. Any idea? Do you think of where this photograph might have been taken? The clues are all there in what you can see in the sky. First of all, do you think it's in the do you think it's in the northern hemisphere? Or do you think it's in the southern hemisphere? Well, the clue's right here. There's no star in the middle, so it can't be in the northern hemisphere. It must be in the southern hemisphere. Whereabouts do you think in the southern hemisphere? Well, I can tell you that it's right at the South Pole. And the reason why you can tell it's at the South Pole is because if you look at the patterns of the stars, so if I follow this one particular star here, it doesn't appear to rise or set. And that means that the location point is right at the South Pole. The stars are making perfect circles right around the sky. Uh, when was the photograph taken? Well, if you look very carefully, you'll notice that there's one thing missing. Those stars have gone completely around the sky, which means you're talking about a 24-hour period, and yet the sun has not come up. So it must be at the South Pole. And it must have been taken during the winter. 
the winter for the South Pole. Uh, if you're at the South Pole uh, for six months of the year, the sun is permanently in the sky during the summertime. Uh, and for six months of the year, the sun sets and doesn't come back up again. So that's why there's no sun in the sky there in the 24 hour period. It must be winter at the South Pole. And then that would mean that this greeny glow stuff that you see here, what on earth must that be? Well, that must be the southern lights. Now we have northern lights, the aurora borealis, but there are corresponding southern lights over the south pole called the aurora australis. And uh, you can clearly see that uh, in that photograph. That's a pretty cool photograph of the nighttime sky, although it would probably be very, very cold to have to go there and have a look at it. But there you get a sense for how the sky appears to behave as the Earth rotates on its axis. Okay, now, if you move around the planet, you'll find out that our view of the sky will be different depending upon uh, where you are, because somebody on the equator is standing in a different direction than somebody who's on the north pole of the Earth. Now, we're going to get a sense for that by doing a an activity based upon uh, very very good program called Stellarium. Uh, you can uh, download this program from www.stellarium.org. It's a very very good program, it's a free program that gives a very good ren ren rendering of the nighttime sky for any location and any time on the planet. Uh, there is the uh, QR code, if you've got a QR code on your device uh, you can uh, download that program. Okay, now for somebody at the North Pole of the Earth, they will see the sky differently than from somebody who is where we are in Tampa, or say somebody who is at the equator of the Earth. The, the sky that they see will be uh, different because you're sitting on a ball rather than on a flat surface, so they just see the sky in different ways. And you can see that on the very next slide, uh, here's what the sky would look like for somebody at the North Pole. Stars appear to just rotate around the sky in uh, circular orbits. And you'll find out that half of the sky it's possible to see, but there's a half of the sky that you never get to see at the North Pole. So that's how somebody from the North Pole would see the sky. At the equator, it's completely different. Somebody sitting on the equator, they don't see the stars moving around the sky in circles, but the stars come up straight up into the sky uh, in the easterly direction. They go right across the sky, and then they drop out of the sky uh, in a westerly direction. Uh, if you were at the equator of the Earth, then the pole star would actually be appearing on the northern horizon. It wouldn't be very high up at all, it would be right on the horizon. Whereas a, an observer at the North Pole would see the pole star directly above their head. Uh, that point directly above your head is called the zenith. Uh, and uh, for an observer at the North Pole, the pole star would be right at the zenith. Now, for most latitudes, you get a mixture between those. And here's what the sky would look like for an observer at a northerly latitude. You can actually divide the sky up into three parts. Firstly, there's a part of the sky that is always visible. That part of the sky is called the circumpolar sky. You can always see the stars in the circumpolar sky, they never set. Now there's a second part to the sky which are called the seasonal constellations. So if I can draw in that region there, that is the seasonal sky. And in the seasonal sky, you'll see different constellations in the winter, like Orion. Um, in the springtime, you'll see Leo. In the summer, you'll see the summer triangle. And in the fall, you'll see the great square of Pegasus. And then there's a finally uh, another part of the sky that is never ever visible because the earth is always blocking our view and I'm going to call that the invisible sky. 
Somebody on planet Earth can see it, but from the perspective of northerly latitudes, uh, it's always below the horizon, so you never get to see it. So there are well-known constellations in the southern hemisphere that northern hemisphere observers uh, might not have heard of at all. Uh, like, for instance, uh, Tucana, the Toucan, or Volans, the flying fish. You may never have heard of it, of those constellations because they're, they're not visible from the northern hemisphere. Okay, so from our perspective, then, if we're looking north, uh, you can see that the stars appear to rotate around the pole star, and uh, they're called circumpolar stars. Whereas if you look towards the east, you'll see that stars come up at an angle. In fact, you can actually measure the angle that they come at. You'll find out that the angle at which they rise at is 90 minus your latitude. 90 minus the latitude of the observer. So if you're at the North Pole, your latitude is 90. Uh, 90 minus 90 is 0. The stars would appear to be going horizontally like this. If you're at the equator, your latitude is 0. And 90 minus 0 is 90. The stars would come up directly like that. For where we are in Tampa, our latitude is 28 degrees. So that means the stars would actually come up for Tampa at an angle of 62 degrees from the horizontal. Okay, so that's how the stars would be rising in the east. And then you'll find out that they get higher and higher and higher into the sky until they are directly south. Uh, once uh, they go south, I'm just going to mark off the, the word here for south. There's an imaginary line that goes from south into the sky. It goes right up above your head through the zenith, right to the pole star and to north. Uh, that line is called the observer's meridian. Uh, and you'll find that that's the best place to observe stars because they get higher and higher in the sky. That means they that you get to see them in clearer and clearer air, and then they get to their highest when they're due south. In fact, when a, a star crosses the observer's meridian, it is said to culminate. And that is the best time to observe a star in the sky, when it actually culminates on the observer's meridian. Okay, that completes uh, the lesson here on the celestial sphere.